Hey, what's up YouTube? So in this problem we have y double prime plus y equals the sine of x. This is a differential equation. There's a couple ways to solve it. Let's solve it using variation of parameters just as a practice problem. So variation of parameters says the first thing you do is you solve the homogeneous um, equation. So solution. So we start by pretending it's equal to zero. So we solve this first, okay? So to solve this, we can write down the characteristic equation or the auxiliary equation. To do that, there's a second derivative, so it's m squared. And then here, it, there's, a, there's a 1, so it's just 1. There's a constant here. It's m to, it's, this is the 0 with derivative, so it's m to the 0, so it's not really there, so it's 1. That's equal to 0. So if you're watching this video, you probably already know how to solve this. I'll go through it. Subtract 1. So you get m equals plus or minus i. So remember, the, this, these solutions take the form 0 plus or minus i, alpha plus or minus beta i. So alpha is equal to 0 and beta is equal to 1, right? And the general form for this type of solution uh, was c1 e to the um, alpha x cosine beta x plus c2 e to the alpha x sine beta x. Except in this case, alpha is 0, right? So who cares, because e to the 0 is 1. So you just basically get y equals c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. So that would be the solution to this homogeneous differential equation. So this is your y1, and this is your y2 for the variation of parameters technique. So step one, you solve the homogeneous equation, you find your y1, and you find your y2. Okay, now that we have that, we have to compute the w's. But, but before we do, let me go ahead and write down the y1 again. So I'm going to write it down up here so I don't lose it, okay? So y1 is equal to cosine x. Then the derivative, we're going to need that. The derivative of y1 is negative sine x. And then y2 is sine x. y2 is sine x. And the derivative of y2, that's cosine x. So step one, inversion of parameters. You solve the homogeneous one. You find the y's. You take the derivatives. Step two, you compute the w's. I'm going to do this just to like compartmentalize the problem. So the next step is to find the w's. So W, come over here, W is the Ronskian of, of, of Y1 and Y2. So basically it's Y1, Y1 prime, Y2, Y2 prime. So just these guys, you just put them in there. Just put them inside, cosine X, negative sine X, beautiful stuff. Sine X, running out of room, cosine X. Then you take the determinants. That's the, that's the Ronskian of Y1 and Y2. So boom, you multiply this times this, you get cosine squared. Then it's minus, right? It's minus, but there's already, then you multiply these, but that's minus also. So it's minus, minus, so it's plus sine squared. So W is equal to 1. I'm going to put this in a box because it's an accomplishment, okay? We needed to find that. The next step is to find W1 and W2. So the formula for W1, the formula for W1, so whenever you're looking for W1, it kind of, it's kind of reminiscent of Kramer's rule. You cover up the first column, okay, and you replace it with 0 and f of x. So this is your f of x. If you were finding w2, you would, you would cover up the second column and you would replace it with 0 and f of x. So we're looking for w1, so we cover up the first column, replace it with 0 and f of x. Be warned, right? This, guy, this has to be in standard form, whatever that is. Basically, that means you can't have a number here. You have like a 7 here, game over, right? you got to put it over here. you got to divide everything by 7. That has to be a 1 there. Otherwise, none of this works, right? Because it'll change. There's a 7 here. When you divide by 7, it changes your f of x. So watch out for that. And then we keep the second column, so sine x, cosine x. Then we find the determinant. This times this is 0 minus sine squared. I'm going to put that in a box. W1 is equal to minus sine squared x. That's, that's an accomplishment, right? W1. W2, same deal, right? W2, same thing. Except this time you keep the first column, so cosine x, negative sine x. And then you cover up the second column and you replace it with 0 and f of x. So 0 sine x, 0 sine x. You multiply cosine times sine minus 0, so you just get cosine times sine. I'm going to write it again. I'm going to write it up here. W2 is cosine x sine x. Right, let me just recap everything really quickly. So step one, when you're using variation of parameters, you pretend it's equal to zero. You solve the homogeneous differential equation. Um, this is your y1, this is your y2. What if you flip them? It doesn't matter. You'll still get the same answer at the very end. At the end of the story, it's the same thing. You get the same answer. So call that y1, call that y2. 
y2, find the Ronskine of those things, right? To find w1, you cover up the first column, replace it with 0 and f of x, boom. To find w2, you cover up the second column, replace it with 0 and f of x, boom. So you have w, w1, w2. Now you got to find the u's. This is the hard part, right? So what separates the problems from being easy and hard is finding the u's. So I'm going to erase this just to make sure you can see, because I don't know. Um, so uh, we still have uh, our y here. I'm going to need that. So I'm going to need that. I'm going to call that y sub c. And we're going to need that for later, right? It's called the complementary solution, if you remember from uh, the method of undetermined coefficients. So we've got the w's. We've got our y. Now we've got to find the u's. Okay, this is the, the bulk of the work. So u1. So u1 is equal to the integral of w1 over w dx. u2 is the same, except it's w2 over w, okay? So w1 is right here. And then w is 1, so it's really nice in this problem. Um, so this is going to be negative sine squared x dx, right? Negative sine squared x dx. So how do you integrate negative sine squared x? Use an identity, right? Cosine squared is the quantity 1 plus cosine 2x all over 2. Sine squared is the same, except it has a minus. So this is going to be negative 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 dx. That's an identity from trig. So u1 is, let's distribute the negative 1 half. It's negative 1 half dx, right? Distributing the negative 1. And then distributing it here, it's going to be plus, I'll pull this one out, 1 half cosine 2x dx. So be really careful there with the distributing. When you integrate negative 1 half, you just get negative 1 half x. When you integrate cosine, you ask yourself, what's a function whose derivative is cosine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, right? But you have a 2 here, so you just divide by the 2, right? You just divide by the 2. When you divide by the 2, you multiply by this 2, so it's 1 fourth sine 2x. Don't worry about the plus c. So that's u1. So again, to integrate cosine 2x, you just divide by the 2, and you ask yourself, what's a function whose derivative is cosine sine? u2, u2 is w2 over w dx. So w2 is right here, so it's cosine x sine x over w, so it's cosine x sine x dx. Let's see, how do we do this in a little while? You can make a u substitution by letting u equal cosine x. You can make another u substitution by letting u equal sine x, or you can use an identity for sine 2x. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cosine x. A multitude of ways of doing it. Let's just let u be sine. Let's just do that. So let u be sine. So then du is cosine x dx. Why did I pick sine? Well, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. We don't want negatives here. No way. So let's keep it simple. Let's call it sine. So this becomes uh, cosine x dx. That's your du. So this becomes u du. When you integrate this, it's u squared over 2 plus c. Let's ignore the constant. u is sine, so it's sine squared x over 2, and that's u2. All right, we're almost there, right? So we've got our u's. Uh, now we're going to form the particular solution, yp. So yp is u1, y1, plus u2, y2. Okay, so yp, so u1 is right here, so it's negative 1 half x plus 1 fourth, and I'll go through all the steps one more time at the very end. So that's our u1, our y1 is, what was our y1? Oh, our y1 was cosine x, right? Our y1 was cosine x. And then u2 is sine squared x over 2. And our y2, our y2 was sine x. That's our particular solution, so the final answer is yc plus yp. So our final answer is y which is yc plus yp. So yc is here, so it's c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x plus, and then yp is here. I'm just gonna, I wish I could just copy paste, but I can't do that. I gotta write it again. Negative 1 half x. I'm not even gonna, uh, I won't even distribute. I'll just leave it. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it. Negative 1 half x. I won't even distribute the cosine. Oh, maybe I will. Okay, too late. I distributed. So negative, you distribute this. So it'd be negative 1 half x cosine x. Distributing that cosine. And then 1 fourth sine 2x cosine x. So plus 1. A lot of times you can use a lot of identities here. 
uh, to rewrite the answer. So like if you're doing homework and you're looking in the back of a book or something and like say, oh my God, my answer is different or you're looking on some website. Um, identities, right? There's all kinds of ways to rewrite solutions here. So we have our YC, then the YP we distributed to get this. Then this times this is this. And then this is sine cubed, I believe, right? Sine x times sine squared is sine cubed. Sine cubed. That's a long problem. It's starting to fade. Long, long problem. So that's the answer. That's the answer. So step one, you pretend it's equal to zero. You find your y, right? You compute w, w1, w2. Then you compute the u's. u1 is w1 over w. u2 is w2 over w. Then you form the particular solution. And then your final answer is yc plus yp. So I went through that kind of quickly because it's probably a long video. I don't know. Um, but I hope that helps uh, someone out there. That's it.